world. If we were all born, it would heal the planet again. Hemp heals your plant. It cleans soil. It can clothe you, it can house you. Cannabis can medicate you. That's the difference. We need to free this plant. No one owns a plant. Who is anyone to put restrictions on a plant? No one has that right. Come on, guys. The plant was illegally put Everybody on come across the street. Without any evidence, folks, because of ignorance, racism. This is the reason why our plant is bastardized. More minorities are thrown in jail for drug and cannabis crimes than any other. Whites, whites don't feel like, the effects of that as much. So a lot of us do not understand it. But there are tons of minorities that do. Listen, we are about ready to do a walk, my wife and I, across the United States so that we can shake hands with as many people as we can. 65% of Americans say that they want this plant free. Well, I hope to touch as many of them as I possibly can over the next year in this trek across the country. It's just to show a form of solidarity. I don't care if you represent normal. I don't care if you what group it is you represent. We all want the same thing. We want this plant free, and we want every human being that's behind bars set back out on the streets, free where they belong, and, and, and everything abolished from their records. This is ridiculous that we do this. We definitely all need to have accountability. My gosh, this plant can't free itself. We have to do this. All of everybody that's watching now on Facebook, you should be standing here. Don't sit home and smoke a blunt and say you support this movement. Get up and move. Activism's first rule is to have to be active. You have to be active to be an activist. Okay, y'all, let's march. Let's show some solidarity. Let's stand with each other. And let's free the planet. Let's free the people. And let's get what we deserve. So at this time, Aaron? Okay, so at this time, oh, can, can someone bring Aaron around, please? <coughs> yeah. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Aaron K. With Act Up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, please w welcome Mr. Aaron Key. Howdy. For those of you who know me, you know me as the Yippie Pie Man from eons ago. Anyway, you know, I may be disabled. This is like the 46th pot parade I had been to since 1973. Almost nonstop. And I still make it regardless. Even when I had cancer, I got my ass out here. But the thing is, I am surprised that there are still people in America's concentration camps doing time for the holy weed. And some of these draconian states, some of them are still doing life. A lot of people lost jobs, a lot of people lost income, a lot of people lost kids. Now it's time to deschedule, not reschedule. Now is time for reparations. Well, the Nazis gave Holocaust survivors reparations. How about the same Nazis, you know, who are run by Donald Trump, who looks like an imi a pale imitation of Barney Rubble, you know, they should give reparations <coughs> plus interest to all who underwent 
persecution for the marijuana laws. Reparations plus interest. It's, it's about time we got justice for the masses. You know, people of color, gays, everybody, and the families of potheads who suffered are entitled to these reparations. Now, to shift gears a little, today is the 49th anniversary of the murders at Kent State. Anybody remember Kent State? The massacre at Kent State, Nixon's army killing four students, protesting the Nixon's attack on Cambodia. The struggle still goes on over at Kent. My friend, I have friends who are still fighting at Kent. They're still fighting for the masses. Now, we're dealing with a lot here, people. You see, I can't go for taxation on the weed. I can't, I can't handle that. I still want to support my local dealer. Because you put weed under liquor, that's the same thing as comp the compromise of prohibition. Yeah. No liquorization of marijuana. Okay. Remember, we still want free, legal, backyard marijuana. Pot's an herb. Trump is a dope. <laughs> Trump is a dope. Okay. <laughs> I mean, hey. Mm. What can you say? All right, folks, so listen up. This time last year, when I got up on stage at the, press, at the pre parade rally, I asked all of you, did, were you aware of where you, where you are at this time in time? You are all walking in historical times. You all are, all of us within earshot and eyesight of my voice, are the only ones who will ever experience the end of prohibition on cannabis. So what do we do? Seriously, what do we do? Do we keep doing these? Because let me tell you what happens at these rallies. See, what happens is they, turn, they quickly turn into therapy sessions. We get up here, we say some things, everybody claps and screams. You might hear a couple of F-bombs or something like that, but then everybody go home and you don't do nothing. And at this time in time, especially here in New York, with what they're talking about when it comes to legalization, when it comes to the taxes, what you have is this is what it looks like when you go un unchallenged. So what we have to do is all of you are now going to become sources for the rest of this state to educate. That's what it takes right now. We have to, now is move time. Contact your local representatives. Hold on, I got it, I got it. Yeah, here, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so, you're gonna wanna call, you can call Governor Cuomo's office, area code 518-474-8390. You can call Senate Leader Stuart Cousins at 518-455-2585. You can call Assembly Speaker Heasty at 518-455-3791. Tell them you support marijuana justice for the state of New York. Tell them you support marijuana justice and reform for your neighbor. Tell them you support marijuana justice and reform for yourselves. At this time, I'd like to bring up onto stage, where's Dana Beal? Dana, I know I saw you around here somewhere. Where are you at, Dana? Okay. Okay, so Dana's not here, but I got I got one even better. At this time, I'm gonna bring up Javier Lopez with Red Hook Initiative. 
Here he is. <laughs> you mind if I stand right in the corner? Peace, everybody. So I'm going to talk about a little story that's going to give you a little bit of perspective of why decriminalization is bigger than what people usually think. All right? So I serve the Red Hook community. I serve tenants in Red Hook public housing. So if you don't know the public housing situation as it relates to cannabis reform, I'm going to give you a quick story. If somebody is caught smoking trees, smoking weed, burning cannabis, and public housing finds out, they can put you on a list. It's called permanent exclusionary list. That list can impact whether or not you live in public housing. If your head of household is made aware that you got caught for burning trees, the situation is this. That head of household can say to their son, their daughter, their uncle, you may have to leave. They're going to take away my housing. This exists in the city of New York. What ends up happening is someone makes a choice. They say, you know what? You got to leave your housing or I'm going to keep you on the low in my apartment and nobody's going to know you're there. So think about that for a section. For burning trees, for smoking cannabis, you get caught by a cop, your landlord finds out. In the city of New York, public housing can say, you may have to leave your housing situation. What does that do? That puts people on the street. That creates a disconnect of families and friends. That kills black and brown communities. It destroys a family. So I'll give you another scenario, that same family, right? They get caught out there, they're aware. That family says, I'm gonna keep that family member, I'm gonna keep that friend in my household. They don't make the landlord know that their apartment's falling apart. So people stay in a screwed up, fucked up housing situation just to protect the family member because of cannabis. That's why decriminalization is important. Decriminalization saves lives. Decriminalization keeps families together. Decriminalization makes sure that housing is maintained. And if those of you who don't know about what your brothers and sisters in public housing are going to, look it up online. My name is Javier Lopez. Thank you very much. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> just to, to, to piggyback on what Javier said, just to be honest with you, actually, legalization does all of that. <laughs> Decriminalization kind of sh shorts us a little bit, but full legalization, yeah, now we're talking a whole new game plan. Regulation, Regulation too, yeah. <laughs> so at this time, I'd like to bring up Miss Imani Dawson, CEO of CEASE, which is Cannabis Education Advocacy Symposium Expo. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to expanding access to cannabis and the cannabis industry through education and advocacy. She's also the community director for Minorities for Medical Marijuana, which you see right here on my shirt. At this time, I'm bringing up Ms. Imani Dawson. Thank you. I will. I'll do that. Thank you so much. I want to say happy Cannabis Parade Day to everybody here. It's amazing to see you come out and support legalization and support the power of the plant. And I'm here because I too am passionate about legalization, but it has to happen in a certain way. So I want to tell you a little bit about my story. Who here is a hip hop head? Do you listen to hip hop growing up? So I grew up in the Just Say No era. I was told that weed was the, that was the pathway to hell and that if you started smoking that crack was soon after and it wasn't until hip-hop artists started talking about weed in a cool way and made it accessible okay i've been told i need to rise hello it wasn't until people like dr dre and snoop and biggie started talking about it that i really explored what it meant and what it really its potential and whether or not it was dangerous and that's when i learned that it wasn't and i'm here because those people came out of communities that have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs if you grew up in brooklyn if you grew up in south central la you know that we were unfairly targeted and that there was unequal enforcement and those communities were devastated by prohibition and they deserve a seat at the table too if we're going to build a new industry it's got to be inclusive 
and it's got to be equitable. And that's why I'm out here today in the rain celebrating. I hope that that is part of the reason why you're here too. This is a plant that has benefits that are that can benefit. They can benefit the entire world. And I wouldn't even have I wouldn't have known that if it wasn't for the community that I came up with and the artists that spoke from that community. And now we've got to share that message with the world so that when we create the industry, there is a place for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Imani. This time, I'd like to bring up onto stage <laughs> Mr. Paul Gilman right of the New York Green Party. Yeah. Oh, shit. Come on up, man. Paul. Okay. Here you go. Okay. You want to stand in front of me? Okay, we're good. Okay. Sure. Okay. Pictures. Yeah, yeah. Stand in front. No, you ain't going to get up here. Oh, oh. Yeah. there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Who here likes marijuana? Yeah. Cannabis, pot, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, my name is Paul Gilman. I'm with the New York Greens, the, a party that does not take corporate sponsorship, a party that really wants to legalize marijuana, not just legalize, we want to repeal all the anti-marijuana laws. It's not enough just to legalize, we want to make sure that there's not two systems where people who don't participate in the so-called legal market, the corporate sanctioned, politically connected, corrupt movement, but the everyday regular people who want homegrown, who want serious pot to treat people who are who are sick. We want, and thank you for the consortium, Albany Consortium. I had to mention them, but peace to everybody. And, um, I don't know, I'm speechless. I thought I could say more. Okay, the Greens, we want no GMO pot. We want no pesticide pot. Who wants to smoke pot with pesticides in it? We don't want special taxes for pot. Who wants to pay $400 a pound just in taxes for pot? That's what our government, our governor, so-called governor proposes. And you see this rain here? This is the first time it's ever rained on this parade. You know why? Yeah, well, well, okay, yeah. And also, I'm blaming the governor. He's not that powerful. Oh, yes, he is. I'm blaming the governor. He will do everything he can to make sure pot is either not legal or acceptable or that only his politically connected super corporate buddies have access to the market and all the social equity that we're fighting for goes down the tubes. You know, all the people who are arrested, I did five years in prison for marijuana. I want my reparations. I want my equity. And I want every sister and brother and all their family members and all the people who love those people to get some kind of reparations for that. You know, and not just business, just not just business opportunities. Because let's face it, the people who can take care of the business opportunities, they haven't been institutionalized. They're the ones that are most capable, you know, but just some kind of job programs, education programs. And I want to make sure that if we do tax commercial pot, no taxation for homegrown, that not one penny of that tax money goes to law enforcement. Not one penny of that should go to the same people that spent the last 40, 50 years incarcerating us. All right, I got one man I respect. I do want to thank Noah Potter and Troy Smith and Steve Bloom for uh, organizing it. They did a good job, you know, and I want to, I love everybody here except certain people wearing blue. <laughs> okay. Well, right now I'm not hating them, but when they threw the handcuffs on me, let's just say a lot of bridges were burned. <laughs> okay. So anyway, 
repeal all the old pot laws, no GMO, no pesticides, no special taxes, um, and all kinds of reparations for everybody. And thank you, like I said, to Troy, Noah, and Steve. Peace, everybody.